Okay, with Emma Grace, who's the director and writer of the short film Stuck, 13 Minutes, LGBTQ Plus uh, Film Festival. Really interesting film because it's 13 minutes long. It's a conversation of, with two friends in one location, and it works. So congratulations on that. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations on making something cinematic with uh, that kind of like with your with your the art direction, the your camera angles, of course, the performances. It 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 goes by like that, and it, it, we don't know we don't realize that. Yeah, it's thirteen minutes long, and it's just two people having uh, having a talk about their friendship. Thank you so much for calling it cinematic. I so often hear that it's like a play, which as a person with a a background in theater, I definitely know where they're getting that from. But I did really feel like um, film was the right medium to tell this story. So I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. Well, because the it's because the like it could easily be a play as well. But at the same time, the location and their stuff and their kind of that how their stuff kind of merges when you have roommates and when friendships and things like that. It works so much for the film. It's like a character in itself, right? Because like their stuff is them, right? In so many ways. Yeah. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. I We definitely put a lot of love and care into the set design um, because we were shooting from the top angle using a jib. We needed yeah. really high ceiling. So we shot in a photography studio. So everything that you see is just on top of a concrete floor. And we really worked hard to try to give it that like living room feel and... I don't think anybody could tell that it wasn't a real living room. No, it's a set. It's a nice set. Nicely done set. Thank Thanks. So, okay. So tell me, okay. So it, it says that you're a first, this is your first film. I've written short films before, but okay. this is my first time directing. First time directing. So how is that experience for you? So thrilling and really exciting. I've always wanted to direct. I did some theater directing when I was like a late teenager. Um, and I enjoyed it so much, but I also, I sort of worried as a younger person that I didn't have total authority in that way. Like it was something that was like kind of a far off dream that maybe someday I would have, have the experience. Um, and at the time when we shot it, I was 28 and now I'm 29. And it's a lot earlier than I expected to feel like I have that authority, but um, I just felt it was so clear and to hand it off to somebody else um, would kind of like muddy my vision a little bit. So I was really excited to step into that role and it was made so easy by the awesome people that I was working with. Um, the entire crew and the cast are all such brilliant creatives in their own right. And so to get to share with them the feelings that I wanted to convey and the you know, the tone that I was trying to get across and to have them not only totally get it, but like bring it even more uh, heightened than I could have really imagined. It, it's been a really cool and like organic collaborative process, which I'm really grateful for. Well, that's a sign of a good producer. So you're also a good producer too, bringing good Thank you. Also all the, everybody who was a producer was so like intimately connected to the film. Mary Frances Noser, who is one of our two actors was a producer on the film. Cause she's just so good at what at, at the many things that she does and yeah. um another one of our key producers uh Anna Nigren was the is is the roommate of our director of photography right so that it was really it felt like a a family project which was such a joy okay so tell me about let's talk about your crew then so you have uh is it Raina uh Raina Virginia your, your DP mm -hmm. yeah She's and the there isn't she hmm is she, is she in Oregon or in Los Angeles? In Oregon now, um, Los Angeles, when we shot it. Okay. Um, they're a wedding photographer as well. That's sort of their primary business. And okay. they're so talented. They capture like these really gorgeous candids with beautiful light. And it just is, I, I basically was like, hey, can you do that? But with moving photography. And they were like, yeah, and I know they've done some music videos in the past and other stuff, but this was also sort of their DP debut. So it was really fun to work together and figure out what we wanted to do, like really, truly as a team. So tell me about your, uh, your like we talked about the production design, art direction. Did you have a team for that as well? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it was all very organic too. Angelica, who was our production designer, is like a good friend of Reina's. And um, Mary Frances found our makeup designer. And there was all these just, it, it was, honestly, it was, it really started with just a sweet little offering. Um, Mary Frances and I went to college together and she is very close and has this really wonderful dynamic with Max Blanc, who is the other actor. Um, they met in an acting class and just hit it off immediately. So when I was sitting in on an acting class with her uh, as a writer director, I, it's one of my favorite things to do um, here in LA. And she kind of leaned over to me and said, hey, do you want to maybe direct me and Max in something sometime? And then the next scene started and I tried so hard to pay attention to it. But instead I was already kind of dreaming of this bird's eye view setup and and what the relationship between these characters were. Um, and so when we were originally conceptualizing it, honestly, part of why I chose Raina besides their incredible talent is I knew that they had some cameras from their photography business. And I thought it would be like a really simple, small, casual thing. But as soon as they were on board, they were like, oh, I have this amazing friend, Paul, and he has a camera. We should use his nicer camera. And he's totally down to let us borrow it as long as he can volunteer his time to be on the set and make the production even better. You know, like it was just every single person really um, brought their own unique talent to, of course, any set will have that, but it really feels like um, everyone just kind of gave their time and their selves and their creativity so freely. It was like a dream come true. It was awesome. How many shots do you have are in the film? Total, probably like four. We did almost exclusively the over the head shots. The original concept that I had was going to just keep them where they were. And maybe we were going to do a practical push in so yeah. that it started really wide and ended really tight. And that was going to be the whole setup. Then you um, got the cutaways, I guess. Yeah, we, we, we got the cutaways basically for safety and I'm super glad that we did because um on the day of production we our jib broke and so we had to kind of improvise from there but what you see in the final short film is the final take that we took all the way through it's definitely like one cohesive take that we just sort of inserted a couple of these cutaways we did yeah. I guess we did three shots one from each side of coverage and then um like a couple just handheld let's look at the the things that make them who they are um yeah. let's look at the production design a little bit so um so you think i figured the, the original idea was to have a one shot um the, the in terms of your the, your words your dialogue like are you very like it has to be the like uh, because it basically it's one shot and i'm assuming that they're they have memorized their lines but yeah they like i'm curious how 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 close are you to the dialogue are they allowed to or were they allowed to improvise a little bit absolutely and also even i sort of requested certain changes they have like after our first take i realized that one of the lines was too complicated and i just asked max hey can you take out 90% of that line and add these three words into it like it was it's a really they're simple changes and I think that they were so I mean it's a testament to their talent that they were so adaptable and able to kind of do it with a moment's notice but also I think that it is because it made sense you know and I think that that has been um a really cool part of this is how much I trust both Max and Mary Frances so even within the rehearsal process there were tweaks before we finalized the script as if it was even finalized day of um where I kind of talked through with them what was most comfortable for them because I do tend to write really naturalistic dialogue anyway and what I care so much about is the connection and how these two people are affecting each other so if they have um means of affecting each other that feel like more authentic to them i'm super enthusiastic and interested in kind of whatever they would like to bring to their performances mm -hmm. 
Gotcha. And how many takes did you have? Like, did you do for the main the main shot? Five. And then you used the last one. Yeah. Were you worried when you got to editing that you didn't have it, or you knew you had it? I knew I de we definitely had something. I think the thing that stressed me out about editing. Thank goodness I did it almost exclusively with Raina Virginia because they are so much more cool, calm, and collected than I am. Um, but I, I was kind of overwhelmed by choice. I felt like there were things that I loved so much in all of the takes and needing to make that decision between leaving it uninterrupted and deciding what cuts serve it and also how to make it cohesive, um, like with the pacing of when the cuts are, are in, since that wasn't part of my original vision, I had to sort of take the time to feel into that, I guess. Yeah. Um, but even so, I think that what the finished product was, especially considering my initial thought was, oh, we could probably shoot this on an iPhone. Oh no, maybe we'll shoot it on a DSLR. Oh wait, like, you know, the way that it has sort of like organically snowballed into what yeah. it is. I'm so pleased with what we were able to come up with. And what about the, like the sound design in post-production? Yeah, absolutely. We have this great sound designer, Tavish uh, Grade, and she really worked back and forth with us a lot because, especially because um, some of the cutaways, like for example, the kissing was, we got to have as an option. We weren't entirely sure if we were going to use it at first. And um, we really wanted to be able to kind of play with it's not quite magical realism, right? But I think I wanted I wanted the audience to question whether they were remembering a previous time that they had kissed or imagining a future where they might. Yeah. Um, and so I thought the former. Little, but, yeah. hmm? I thought the former, but go ahead. Yeah, totally. And I feel like everybody has a different answer, which is sort of exactly what I would want out of it. Um, but when I kind of explained that to her, I, it had never occurred to me there's sort of like a, a chiming sound, like a little bit of wind chime type yeah. sound that goes with those um, cut-ins. And that really isn't something that I would have imagined as being a way to create that sort of like whimsy and um, I don't know, that feeling of butterflies that you get when you're around somebody, especially somebody you don't like maybe 100% know what your relationship is to them. Yeah. Um, and then obviously there is also just the the dialogue um, because we were shooting in a space with such high ceilings and it is such a um, conversational piece and there's so much intimacy that, you know, there are a couple lines where especially um, Max, who just has this like wonderful, not, it's not a growl to his voice, but there's something so intimate about the way that he, uh, spoke in the character of Conrad and so there were a couple times where we weren't sure if we were going to have to do ADR or not and Tavish was really just able to like create something that was more clear than what I could hear with my little headphones on set you know yeah. what I mean it was really um it was awesome so you got a film that you, you you've done a film I'm assuming you're gonna do it again oh absolutely definitely yeah you have yeah, in mind? I have a couple shorts that I'm sort of kicking around ideas with. I'm also um, definitely still in the development process, but working on a pilot that it, this short film is a proof of concept for. It's funny to say proof of concept, though, because um, the short film definitely came first. And the concept for the TV show is really based around the background the like creating the backstory creating that we did in rehearsals. Um, I can give Mary Frances knows her a lot of the credit on sort of dreaming up these characters into a much more epic storyline. Um, she like, she's in the film in this, in the, in the, the, the next one too. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. There's definitely at least two of the concepts that I'm talking about and kicking around. She is sort of, central and integral to I have a couple other ideas um and even some older stuff like I I was working on a short film that was really exciting and really fun and awesome with this great Yale School of Drama grad that I'm good friends with named um Adam Shockett and he mm -hmm. moved back to New York so it's a little bit on hold right now but um I'm trying to figure out if 
we could shoot it in New York or have him come back here. Um, and also, I am definitely a writer and a filmmaker and director, but I also explore a lot of other mediums. So, um, like, for example, I'm currently in the process of submitting to agents for, like, children's literature author illustrator uh, portfolios. And um, I have a play that actually uh, Mary Frances Noser was in the most recent staged reading of. Um, back when I used to live in New York, I did the first staged reading, like, six or seven years ago. And I did another one about a year ago. And so I'm still in the process of that rewrite and the feedback that I got from that. But all of it is all so collaborative. And I'm just really enjoying the process of kind of getting that feedback and then metabolizing it. Gotcha. And so where, where are you from originally? You're in Los Angeles now, but... I'm in LA now. I grew up outside of Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah. And then I went to school in Boston at Emerson College. That's where Mary Frances and I met. And then I lived in New York for a while after I graduated and did a quick stint in Denver. And now I'm here in LA. Quick stint in Denver. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to go right in the woods. <laughs> My uh, uh my undergraduate degree is in theater and performance, okay. and I love that as a craft as well. Yeah. But I, when I first started writing short films, it was in college, and I just was so excited by that process. And I'm highly emotional, so I wrote poetry all the time. And by the time I graduated, I really wanted to pursue writing more. So I self-published a book of poetry and then I ran off to be a writer in the woods. And Denver is a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. And I was excited to move to LA and um, have more people that I could talk about art with. Than well, when I do the festivals in Los Angeles, that's a lot of times that's the connection city where you land yeah. in Denver. I thought maybe you just were going to Los Angeles and you just like missed your connection and stayed there. <laughs> it, took a, it was a really brief stint. It was about six hours. No, it was about two years, <laughs> but it was, it was, yeah worthwhile and taught me what I needed to know about um, kind of connecting to my daily writing craft. And I, you know, it would have been so much harder to make this short. I mean, I, it w I wouldn't have, right. Because I wouldn't have been spending as much time with Mary Frances if I lived in Denver. Um, but it's so wonderful. Like even there's really wonderful, generous people here in LA, which I know is maybe a sentence that a lot of people don't hear oh, right? I, I believe, yeah. often, but um, a lot of our equipment was donated as well. Like it was um, during the strike and um, a wonderful man named Deepak Whitesides who owns a grip company, Great like news. donated yeah. so much of our stuff because his truck was just unfortunately sitting unused. Um, so we had really good timing in regards to what felt like a really stagnant time in the industry. We were able to kind of do what we could with the people who unfortunately weren't able well, to. The thing about Los Angeles is that it's, that's the industry, right? Whereas New York is, there, there's a million industries, right? Wall yeah. Street, fashion, you know, whatever, music. But that's the industry in, is the number one industry. Number two industry is, is the film industry. So mm -hmm. everybody, even if you work at Starbucks or you're a waiter, you're you're, you're, the, you're the film industry. Absolutely. And so, every, but everybody wants to be a part of something, right? And as long as there's mutual com conversations, and because the, the the competition gets gets is when it gets in trouble, right? Where like you're trying to get on a staff writing assignment, and your friend yeah. is at the same time. That's yeah. that's when it becomes difficult, right? But if there's you guys are all working on one thing, that's when beauty happens. And the, absolutely, the yeah. Yeah, it's really like a, what do they say? Uh, rising tides lift all ships, right? It very much so felt like everybody was getting a chance to showcase what they're really good at. And I'm really grateful that they lend me their skills yeah. and talent. Yeah, and they want to be, like I said, they want to they want to be working. They want to be doing good things, right? So yeah, it feels good to be immersed in it. That's, I think, I loved New York as well. And I have absolutely no qualms with New York but there is something so cool about kind of being fully yeah. surrounded by people who are putting their whole selves into pursuing art well and let's be honest too because sometimes you when, like you're working in the film industry and in order to pay the rent you're, you're working on some crappy stuff 
Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, when you get to work on a fun project like yours, it's good. It's people love it, right? So because it's actually yeah. it's actual like passion quality stuff. So Yeah. Right? Yeah. Thank you so much. It, that's totally how it felt. It was really it was sort of a special conference of a lot of really, I think, special people. So it's I'm not, really no offense, nothing against your your DP. Yeah. Because I think that wedding uh photographers are they do they're very talented but totally you're only limited to certain weddings right yeah. like your 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 creativity is limited and mm -hmm. working on a film like yours i'm sure she uh for sure they were they were ecstatic doing it so yeah yeah i think so and i think that having the it, sort of having fresh eyes from both of us you know yeah. Like the way that I I was sort of debuting this this skill that I know that I have, especially in terms of like actors, right? I think I'm very much of an actor's director because that's what my background is in. Um, and to have them have such a specific skill set in terms of like you're you're absolutely right that weddings are limited and it's like a it's a, an intuition that allows you to notice when there's a beautiful moment happening between two people and yeah. to capture it like before they notice that you're there and i think that some of that um like interpersonal skill really helped with the relationship between us like not and this isn't any i mean super technical dps are incredible and help this industry run and they're amazing but also having somebody who needed to sort of dive into that research and cross-reference with multiple other professionals we really got this like super clear vision even down to little things like um <clears throat> we both really like the cinematography and the set design on the show Heartstopper. it's like very colorful and bright and the light is so like dreamy and so Raina did some research and found an interview with the DP for one of those episodes that talked about a certain filter that they used over the lens to create that dreamy feeling and realized that also having like a fog machine would help us with that sort of, yeah, hazy, dreamy atmosphere. And not to say that a more technical DP wouldn't have known about those instruments of course I think they would have but to feel like we were really trying to discover what we wanted to create together was a gift on that note uh congratulations on the film uh Thank let's you talk again much. I want you to keep making movies and um keep, keep telling stories like I said doesn't matter what medium keep telling stories and let's Thank talk you. again with for, my, for myself let's talk again when you make your next film I would love that. Thank you so much for your time. And th thank you for this honor of being in this festival. I really, um, I'm so excited about it.